civil rights, the social freedom and equality that we are familiar with today, but was wrongfully stripped away from those of color since the conception of the United States. African Americans faced harsh discrimination throughout history. The greatest form of this prejudicial treatment was endured by those within the military. It began with the prohibition of the enlisting of black troops. But even in 1866, when the legislation that allowed them to enlist was passed, those who enlisted did not know that they were not only going to fight for their country, but for their social justice, a fight that would not be in vain. By September 21st, 1866, the 10th Cavalry Regiment was created, one of the first colored regiments who were later labeled by the Native American tribes who fought against the African American troops in the Indian Wars as Buffalo Soldiers. This nickname became their label, and it is a name by which they were addressed and now remembered by. The animosity towards the soldiers was intense. A multitude of officers refused to command black regiments even if it cost them promotions in their rank and salary. The Buffalo Soldiers were only allowed to serve west of the Mississippi River due to the white sphere of armed African Americans and the prevailing feelings after the Civil War, but because of the high demands of soldiers needed, their feelings had to be pushed aside. The Buffalo Soldiers fought in the Indian Wars, the Spanish-American War, the Philippine-American War, the Punitive Expedition in New Mexico, and World War I to name a few. Despite the numerous wars where they exhibited their loyalty to the United States and the government, they still faced unfair treatment. When equipment and horses were distributed, the white soldiers got to choose their equipment before the black soldiers, which left them with rifles that did not always work and mares that had been worn out. Their discrimination did not end with the equipment. It continued with the citizens of the places in which they were stationed in, such as the Brownsville Raid. On July 28, 1906, a few years after the Spanish-American War, the 1st Battalion arrived in Brownsville shortly after being stationed in the Philippines. Before the soldiers set foot in Brownsville, the tension between the townspeople and the Buffalo soldiers was present. It was reported that a few soldiers, a handful of soldiers from the fort, decided to come into Brownsville uh, and shoot up the town. And that, that incident and basically the things that happened after it are what is known, or what has now become known as the Brownsville Raid. These soldiers allegedly, like I said, they uh, grabbed their service rifles, jumped the fence of the fort, and came down the alley that is between um, Washington Street and Elizabeth Street and came down, I want to say, all the way to about 13th Street. And then when they came around 13th Street, they turned that corner and they just basically started shooting. And Frank Natus was the um, bartender and he basically heard this commotion outside, went out to go see what was happening and got shot. Whoever the actual raiders were, whether it was um, town folk that were trying to frame the soldiers or whether it was actual soldiers, there was no concrete evidence to support the fact that they were actual soldiers that came from the fort to shoot up downtown Brownsville. Unfortunately, this was not the only event in which citizens of towns discriminated the soldiers, but even if they lost this battle, it did not cause them to lose the war of social justice. April 12, 1945. This day marked the death of a president, but the birth of a new one, Harry S. Truman. Our 33rd president was raised in the state of Missouri. He was in the border state during the Civil War, the state that issued the Missouri Compromise. Additionally, his grandparents on both his mother's and father's side owned slaves. Truman's background led many people to believe that he would contribute little to nothing to the civil rights movement for African Americans, but this belief was proved wrong after the signing of Executive Order 9981, the executive order that would end the social injustice and segregation of African American troops. On February 12, 1946, Sergeant Isaac Woodward had just been honorably discharged from his service in World War II and was traveling from Georgia to North Carolina by bus. He was kicked off the bus for allegedly being disruptive, and then Chief of Police Linwood Scholl not only beat him, but gouged his eyes out, leaving Sergeant Isaac Woodward blind. This incident not only gathered national headlines, but reached Harry S. Truman as well. 
On September 1946, a few months following the incident, Truman wrote to Tom Clark, the Attorney General, asking him to set up a commission on civil rights in order to gain insight on what can be done. And by December 5, 1946, Truman issued an executive order that established the President's Commission on Civil Rights. On June of 1947, Truman was the first sitting president to speak at a conference session of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. There is no justifiable reason for discrimination because of ancestry or religion or race or color. Truman proposed a series of proposals that dealt with not only African Americans, but different ethnic groups as well. Unfortunately, Congress refused to pass any of his proposals addressing civil rights. However, after a long battle, Executive Order 9981 was finally issued that ended the discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, or national origin within the United States Armed Forces, ending segregation within our military. Since then, African Americans have been able to perform their civic duty to the fullest, and from then on out, everyone was simply a soldier.